Can TCU pull off their biggest upset of the season by beating Georgia in the national championship game? They've made it this far. They continue to silence the doubters. They continue to put on a show, and they continue to exceed expectations and surprise a lot of people. We're going to dive into the players that are going to make an impact on this game, the matchups that we really need to pay attention to, and the keys that will help TCU win a national championship. Now, everything starts with Max Duggan. I don't think that's a secret. I don't think that's news to anybody. I think that he is one of the more inspiring players in college football. You look at that after the loss to Kansas State, you knew how much this meant to him. And you know how much this game means to him, too. Even the Fiesta Bowl win, you saw the excitement in, in this team. You saw the excitement in this offense. And Duggan is going to be a big reason for that. He has to play a better game than he did against Michigan because Georgia is a different animal. But he is someone who is more than capable of doing that. Going to the defensive side of the ball, D. Winters has been getting a lot of love and it's easy to see why you know he and and dylan horton have really stepped up in terms of being the go-to guys on defense when it comes to getting stops creating turnovers creating havoc and d winters is someone who i think coming into this year not many people knew his name and now after the michigan win a lot of people are going to be talking about him you know that georgia is going to have him circled that you know that they're going to want to know where he is at all times and that is something that is the respect that you are hoping for if you're a player The last one is going to be Kendra Miller. Now, if he is good to go, he is one of the major impact players on TCU. Someone who, for some reason, is not getting as much love as he deserves. Now, at the next level, when you look at the NFL, look at at scouts and analysts, they know who he is. But I think in college football, in the media, I don't think they're talking about him. Mostly because I don't think they're talking about TCU as much. They're talking about whoever TCU is playing. And that fits right into the underdog narrative that fits right into where TCU wants to be, and they wouldn't have any other way. And if Kendra Miller is able to go, I'm really excited to see what this offense can do. Now, when you go to Georgia, you look at who the the players that TCU has to pay attention to. The first one is going to be Jalen Carter. You have to know where Jalen Carter is at all times. You, I don't know what Sonny Dykes is going to do to slow him down because he is almost like a unicorn in terms of college football. He is someone who has that power and athleticism combination that you don't really see, and he is someone that can single-handedly disrupt what an offense is trying to do. Next is Brock Bowers. For a while against Ohio State, Brock Bowers wasn't being utilized in the offense. Now, that probably wasn't intentional. It wasn't like they couldn't get him the ball. It's just that they weren't. It, it wasn't working, and... Uh, you know, even Kirk Herbstreit mentioned it. Where is Brock Bowers when they need him? And pretty much right after he stepped up and made a number of plays, a number of big plays, a number of special plays. He is someone that can give TCU problems. He is someone that is going to get the football quite a bit. And Georgia's offense is going to want to feed him as much as possible. And it's going to be up to guys like D Winters to be able to slow him down. And the last one, I think everybody knows this is going to be Stetson Bennett. You have to be able to know what he can do you will have to also know what he can and do for you in terms of turnovers and Stetson Bennett is better than people give him credit for including probably myself but he is someone that is kind of the x factor of this game and if TCU is able to get under his skin and rattle him then I think they're in good hands but he is someone who can also make Big time throws and with some of the keys that we're going to talk about, Bennett plays a big role in that. Now, keys the game for TCU. The first one's going to be get Max, just give Max Duggan a chance. You look at we talked about Jalen Carter. He is a player that is just one player that it can wreak havoc in TCU's game plan. You have to be able to block him. It was, even if you send extra help his way, you have to be able to give Max Duggan a clean pocket. You have to give him time to throw. Now We've seen that he's poised in the pocket. He can make plays even when the pocket collapses. There's pressure in his face. He is someone that can do that. The more you give him chances to throw, the more time you give him to make plays, the more likely you are to be successful. And that's something that TCU really will focus on. They're going to focus on giving him other players that can step up because Quentin Johnston is going to be someone that Georgia has circled. They're going to want to know where he is at all times. So that gives other guys opportunities to step up. Jordan Hudson can step up, Darius Davis, Savion Williams. I think outside of Quentin Johnston, the passing attack didn't really feature 
many explosive plays. And you're that's something that's going to have to change. You have to be able to find depth. And we've seen them do that this year. Those guys have stepped up. Even Tay Barber, someone who's going to make a major impact, might not be one of those big names. Now, Georgia is also going to send unique pressures. And one thing that TCU struggled with against Michigan was – stopping pressure in the second half Michigan sent a ton of pressure to start the third quarter and at times TCU didn't really know what to do with that and it's a big reason why Michigan was able to get back in the game Georgia I think will send even more unique pressures they have some players that can create pressure by themselves in one-on-one matchups and TCU has to be ready for that so giving Max Duggan a chance is going to be a huge key and something that's going to determine how successful they are on offense. Now, the second one, this might be more important, uh, but this was the most important thing for the defense. Be wary of play action. Now, I know that TCU's game plan, it, it, at least it appeared so, was to take away the run game for Michigan. Outside of that first run for the Wolverines, TCU didn't really let up much against against the Wolverines. So that's something that's really, you can tip your hat to them. Michigan absolutely torched TCU on play action. They had a number of plays where guys were running wide open and J.J. McCarthy didn't have to make a perfect throw. And Georgia can do that. Georgia has a run game with Kenny McIntosh. And I think that even Kendall Milton you throw in there. Those are two really good running backs on top of this offensive line of Georgia that is going to be really, really tough for TCU. They are going to be able to run the football, and I bet you TCU is probably going to implement some of the same principles to stop the run game. That means that you're vulnerable on the backside. So you can still be aggressive against the run. The front seven has to do their part to be able to slow down the run game because, again, Michigan was not running the ball really well, but play action was still working for TCU because they were so focused on stopping the run because they were being so aggressive in slowing down the run game. Play action opened things up for Michigan, and that's something that you know Georgia is going to try to capitalize on. So the the DBs have to be disciplined. This is a defensive backs group that is really good at what they do. They can create havoc. They can create turnovers. But they also have to be disciplined. You look at the Michigan game, a lot of times they were caught looking in the backfield. Now, I know you want to help support the run. You want to be able to limit the big plays in case someone breaks through. But you also have to see that wide receiver that is running right past you. And they didn't do that against Michigan. So you know Georgia is going to try to do the same. You have to be aware of that. And now you know. You survived that game. You survived with a win. And now you have to be able to adjust. You know, hey, I got torched last game. I can't do that again if we're going to win a national championship. You have to take your game to the next level. And even if you're still going to be aggressive, you have to find a way to adapt and be better than you were last game. And playing play action isn't going to be easy, but you still have to be disciplined with your reads. You have to take away, because again, Brock Bowers is going to be running right past you. And Stetson Bennett, as we've seen, doesn't have trouble hitting guys that are wide open. Now, that being said, if you are playing discipline and you are in position, you have to be opportunistic. Georgia does not turn the football over very much. At least they don't lose the turnover battle very frequently at all. If you're able to make an interception, which we saw them, we saw TCU do that against Michigan, three turnovers, but they could have had more. You have to be able to take any turnover possibility, any turnover opportunity, and turn it into your offense getting the ball back. You do whatever you can to do that. Stetson Bennett can be rattled. I mentioned this when we were talking about Ohio State being able to beat Georgia and kind of got some heat for it. Stetson Bennett is the guy that you want to force to make good decisions. Now, he can do that, but you saw he can also make really bad decisions. He can also struggle to complete passes. He is not the quarterback that Georgia fans really think that he is. He's not as good as everyone thinks he is, but he's also someone that when he gets hot, he, he can be that good. He's just not that consistent. So if you're TCU, you're going to want to be able to get the inconsistent Stetson Bennett, especially early on. If you can get, look at J.J. McCarthy, first pick six. That is a way to get a quarterback rattled. That is a, get a what perfect way to get a quarterback in his own head and that's what you have to do against Stetson Bennett. Now, you have a ton of playmakers for the Georgia offense that can can kill you, can really hurt you. And 
that's something that that this group is going to have to worry about. They are going to have to be again. Be we talked about be disciplined. You talked about being still being aggressive, but still be disciplined. Be aggressive with your ability to take the ball away from that offense. Give the ball back to your own offense. Avoiding those costly penalties is going to be another thing too. They had seven penalties for eighty-five yards. A couple of pass interference penalties. That is something that's going to hurt drives. That's going to extend drives for Georgia. But if you're able to take the ball away from Georgia and give it back to your own offense, then I think that you're going to be in a good position to win the game. TCU has done a great job of creating those turnovers, of keeping their team in the game. Now, this isn't a defense that is going to shut down Georgia. They are not going to keep Georgia off the scoreboard. They are not going to post a shutout. However, They have done a really good job of just continuing to have short-term memory to be able to hang in this game and give you a turnover when you need it. It, It's not always going to be every single drive, but it's not going to be as frequently as you probably would like. But this is a group that when you need it, they're able to step up and they have to continue doing that. If it's going to be a shootout, TCU is more than happy to play that game. They Their defense even doesn't really get too worried about giving up so many points. Now, if your offense isn't scoring, that's a different issue. But you're looking at a team that's very disciplined in terms of moving on to the next play. And they know that, yeah, I gave up this next this big play here, but if I pick the ball off and get it back to my offense, we don't have to worry about them scoring. So continue doing that, continue to be opportunistic, and things will be just fine. The top matchups for TCU – we talked about Jalen Car- Carter and Allen Ali and that interior offensive line for TCU is going to have their hands full. Jalen Carter is a potential top five pick, maybe the first overall pick, depending on who's going to be there. Jalen Carter is someone who's going to just make your life miserable. He is, is so unique in terms of talent. He is so unique in terms of skill set. And Ali is going to have his hands full. He is someone that is going to have to play really well and do whatever he has to do to keep Jalen Carter out of the backfield, whether that's in a run game or in the passing game. He is someone that is going to create some issues. He's going to create havoc, and you just have to limit how much he does. Now, the one that we everyone will talk about coming into this game, Quentin Johnston versus Keely Ringo, and for good reason. Six foot four, two fifteen in Quentin Johnston versus six two, two hundred in Keely Ringo. An absolute colossal matchup between two potential first round picks in next year's NFL draft. It's going to be fun to see what these two do against each other. Quentin Johnston is a special talent. We saw him on full display against Michigan. We saw what he was capable of doing. And we saw what Keely Ringo can do against one of the better wide receivers that we maybe have ever seen in Marvin Harrison Jr., And Keely Ringo is really good, and he is someone that is very aggressive. So if TCU is looking for advantage, you can bait him maybe into some pass interference penalties. You can throw some back shoulders, Quentin Johnson. I think Quentin Johnson is still very much a key part of this offense, even if Georgia is doing what they can whatever they can to take him away. He is someone that's going to make a major impact, even if he's not catching the ball. But if you're able to get him in position to make a play, pick up some yards, or even pick up a penalty, then I think they're going to do that. And then the last one is, I think this is just the fun matchup. Max Duggan versus Stetson Bennett, two guys who have really been doubted most of their careers, if not all of their careers. And now they get a chance to play for a national championship. Stetson Bennett gets a chance to defend his title. Max Duggan is hoping to bring a title to TCU. And I think that Duggan has been an inspiring story. Like I mentioned earlier, he's been really fun to watch. And it's going to be interesting to see how he does against a really good Georgia defense. Now, Stetson Bennett, in his own right, having a pretty good year. There are some questions that I still have about his game, but he's still really fun to watch. That second half against Ohio State, really, really good. Really exciting to see him play confident. And he can do that again against TCU, especially against this defense. If Duggan can find a way to carve up Georgia's defense, then I'm really excited to see what TCU can do. But both of these guys are really fun stories to follow, and they're going to be really fun to watch in this national championship game. TCU's here. They have nothing else to to worry about. There's only one more game on the schedule. There's nothing to lose here. You're playing against the team that uh, pretty much everybody is going to pick outside of Fort Worth. I think everybody is going to pick Georgia. They are going to be confident in what the Bulldogs can do. The Bulldogs are defending their crown. They are looking to, to get another national championship in their trophy case. And I think they're playing with a ton of confidence too. However, TCU is in 
position to make that not happen. And I think that this has been one of the more exciting stories, one of the craziest stories of college football, a first year head coach making it to the national championship game, the comeback wins, the the insane plays that we've seen from TCU, the back and forth shootouts. This is a team almost feels like a team of destiny. It feels like they are are right there and a win just seems like it's going to happen, but there are things that they need to do. They cannot repeat what they did against Michigan in terms of mistakes. They cannot let momentum slip from their fingertips. You can't go up 21 to six and then just let the other team storm back. Georgia is too good. They are a better team than Michigan. And I think that TCU can handle it. Now, if you want to get into that shootout like they did against Michigan, I I'm fine with what TCU can do. Uh, if it's going to be a lower scoring game, that's a different story. But I think that this is a team that's really fun to watch. They are playing with a ton of confidence. And even though everyone's picking Georgia, TCU is more than capable of stealing that away from them.